Welcome to the commentary box once again here at Edgbaston. Day three, Surrey starting 33 for one, leading by 38 runs. Very good day with the ball for Surrey yesterday, of course. Sam Curran, outstanding spell after lunch. Three wickets for two runs in 18 balls and finishing with career best figures of five for 44. But the bowlers did a terrific job all round. And this morning, Rory Burns will start 14, not out. Stuart Meeker, the night watchman, four not out. It's a case of Surrey batting for as long as they can and getting as many runs on the board as they can on a pitch that continues to offer to the bowlers. So day three here at Edgbaston. And as always, you'll miss none of the action here on Surrey TV. Surrey began day three on 33 for one in their second innings, a lead of 38 over Warwickshire with nine wickets still in hand. Mika and Burns were the not out batsmen and they started positively on a sunny morning in Birmingham with Burns going after Barker early on and then both batsmen sweeping Patel to the boundary. The partnership continued to build throughout the session, with Burns in particular punishing anything loose on the offside. However, half an hour before the lunch break and Warwickshire had their breakthrough. Burns LBW to Hannon Dolby for 49. Sangakara joined Mika at the crease and the pair saw Surrey to lunch at 112 for two. Sangakara came out after lunch looking to attack, hitting Barker for three boundaries in his first two overs after the break. He lost partner Meek half an hour into the session, caught behind off Patel for 41. Sangakara though was in the mood, combining punishing pull shots with some deft touch throughout the offside field. Sangakara passed 50 and started to show the kind of form that saw him reach a test average in excess of 57. Ansari had provided solid support before he departed, caught behind off right for 28. But Sangakara finished the session strongly alongside new man Roy, Surrey going to tee at 243 for four. The evening session didn't start well for the visitors, with Barker claiming two wickets in his first two overs after tea. Roy was the first man to go, caught by Clark for 36. Eight balls later and danger man Sangakara was also back in the pavilion, caught behind off Barker for 88. That brought Sam Curran to the crease and with a declaration on the horizon, the 18-year-old looked to score quickly. Curran was crushing them to all parts of the ground as the lead grew past 350. Chasing quick runs, Surrey then lost their last four wickets in five overs. Davies out caught Patel off right for 42. Tom Curran caught behind off right for a golden duck. And Sam Curran was caught behind off right for 62 of 56 balls. Footip would be the last man out, caught Barker, bowled Patel for seven, Surrey all out for 390 and an overall lead of 395. Warwickshire needed to get through a tricky two over period in their second innings before stumps, but Tom Curran gave Surrey the perfect end of the day when he had Westwood LBW in the fourth bowl of the innings for a duck. Warwickshire then went to stumps on two for one with a mountain to climb on the final day. Surrey needed nine wickets to win and the hosts needing to bat through the day to save the game. Well, I think if we come to the ground this morning and I said, you'll have a lead of 395 at the end of the day and a Warwickshire wicket, I think you'd have settled for that, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, pitch has changed a touch as well. So, if, you know, if it had stayed how it had done the previous two days, We'd definitely have taken that, um, but uh, I think that's a, a comfortable enough um, lead uh, to make sure that we've we've got plenty of runs um, for them to chase tomorrow. 